So in this talk, we're going to prove an important thing about the Taylor series operator. That is, we're going to prove that the Taylor series of the product is the product of the Taylor series, briefly speaking. So uh, there's another video where we prove that the Taylor series preserves sums and scalar multiples. So it's linear. But now we're going to prove that it actually preserves products as well. Now we have to be a little careful here. So you obviously start with two functions which are infinitely differentiable. The product we claim is also infinitely differentiable and the Taylor series of the product is the product of the Taylor series. But we have to be careful what we mean by multiplying two Taylor series or in general multiplying two power series. Okay. So, so just to help you understand what that means, I have written two power series here. Okay. I haven't written them completely. But I, I've just written enough of them so we can see uh, how to multiply them a bit. So when I want to multiply these, what's the constant term going to be in the product? One. Okay. What is the linear term going to be? One plus three x five. What's the coefficient of x going to be? That's my question. Oh, there will be three. Well, there'll be oh, a three x. Be three plus one four. Three plus one four. Right. So you'll you'll get one product of this x and this one, one product of this three x and this one. Okay. Now, what's the coefficient of x squared? B nine plus two plus three plus one. Where did the plus one come from? Plus two. So what's that? Now, how many terms are you adding total? Four. Why four? There's a, you just have three terms. Oh, right? three terms. Right. So you have mm -hmm. x squared times one, x times x, and one times x squared. Mm -hmm. So you'll have nine plus three plus two. That's fourteen. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Fourteen. What about uh, the coefficient of x cubed? How many terms will you be adding up there? Five. No, four. Right. Each oh, is one, one more. One more, yeah. right? You're, yeah. you're, you're, so it's one times seven yeah. plus one times two plus nine times three. Seven plus two is nine plus twenty-seven. Thirty-six plus one times one. Thirty-seven. Yeah. Now we cannot write down the later terms here because we don't know what the higher degree terms are on these mm -hmm. two sides are. Okay, good. But so you get the idea. You have to, you, you, each, e, e, powers of x just multiply the usual way. But then you have to add up all the ways you could do that. Now, if instead of x I had written x minus x not everywhere, the procedure would be the same. Okay? Mm -hmm. You just read x minus x not as your x. Okay, good. So the key ingredient in this proof is, is this thing I've written here, which is, which follows basically from the product proof. And this is the product rule for higher derivatives, what I've written here, and it follows from the product rule for the uh, differentiation for the first derivative, just by induction. Okay, but first let's understand what this is saying, what the notation here means. So the left side is saying the nth derivative of the product of the two functions. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what's the right side saying? What does this symbol mean? Well, I have it here. This is called n choose k, and it's it means n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Okay. Uh, it's basically the number of subsets of size k in a set of size n. Okay. Uh, so this is summation n choose k f n minus k g k. So this is uh, the n minus kth derivative of f times the kth derivative of g. Okay. Okay, so let's just check, sanity check, when n equals 1, you get the usual product rule. Okay, what happens when n equals 1? The sum goes from k equals 0 to 1. So there's two terms to add. When k equals 0, what do you get? Uh, we get 1. 1 choose 0, which is, is 1. 1, yeah. Times? F prime. F prime. Times? G to the G, G to the G, 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 G. Okay. plus I one choose one. Mm -hmm. That's one times F times G prime. Okay, so this gives a usual product rule for differentiation. Let's just see what happens when you take the second thing. What you get? N equals two is the second derivative. F double prime G G plus 
2 choose 1 is 2, 2 times f prime g prime plus f g double prime. Okay, this is the usual thing, right? I mean, you, you, you maybe you've seen the second derivative, yes. You can just take this, differentiate it, and check you get that. Right, so if, if you just try to differentiate this expression, you will get exactly this. Okay? And, and if you do it in general, and you prove by induction that it works exactly like this. Okay. So far, so good. So, now this arrow means, what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that whenever the right side exists, so whenever f and g are such that the summation makes sense, which means f and g are both differentiable up to n times, then the left side also exists, f g is also differentiable n times. Okay. Uh, now, so this observation, this existentially definitely tells us that f times g is infinitely differentiable, right? So, I mean, from this, we can, we do get that f comma g infinitely differentiable at x naught. This implies the product is infinitely differentiable. Do you agree? Yeah. Why? Why is the product infinitely differentiable? So for every k, why is for every n, why is f times g n times differentiable? Hmm? Because f is n minus k. Yeah, I mean f is for all. I mean this this right side makes sense basically. Mm -hmm. So the left side also makes sense. Okay. So in particular, what we are interested in actually is when you plug in the numerical value x naught here. I'll call this dagger, where you plug in x naught. For this. So now it's actually an equality of numbers. And, and there's actually one such equality for every n. Okay. Now let's now try to prove the Taylor series of the product is the product of the Taylor series. So let's write down the Taylor series for f at x naught. What's the Taylor series for f at x naught? summation k from 0 to infinity f k the k derivative of f at x naught over k factorial times x minus x naught to the k And what's the Taylor series for g at x naught? Replace the function notation with g. Okay, and uh, what's so, okay, now, let me, I won't write on the Taylor series so f times g right now. What I want to do is, I want to look at the product of these two Taylor series. Okay? And I want to see what is the coefficient of x minus x naught to the n in the product. Let me write that down. in the product for any fixed n. Well, now I'll, I'll just try to match the notation up here. So, uh, what what I want to say is, I want to say that if, so in order to get x minus x naught to the n, I could pick a k, x minus x naught to the k here. But then what should I pick here so that the product is x minus x naught to the n? n minus k. n minus k, right? So, so I can pick x minus x naught to the k on the g side and x minus x naught to the n minus k on the f side and uh, and that would give me one thing and I can do that for every k. So what I'll get is I'll get summation k equals 0 to n and you're picking, remember, you're picking n minus k for f and k for g. So what will you get as the coefficient? Mm -hmm. f giving n, n minus k. n minus k. x naught. X naught over n minus k factorial. 
times g unit k x naught over k factorial times well that's just a good this is a coefficient okay okay good so now what are we we're almost done we, we've done the crucial hard work so what do we next need to do we want to show that the denominator of the coefficient which we just derived mm -hmm. equals to the expression okay so so yeah okay so so we have to tackle this n choose k business right mm -hmm. that that's the thing and that's that's the missing thing we have but luckily we have n choose k is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial mm -hmm. Right, so you we want to somehow use use that fact. Okay, so I want to rewrite this. Uh, can we do this? Can we do this here? Mm -hmm. right. So this, I'm I'm going to. I now want to multiply and divide by n factorial. Okay. I want to multiply and divide by n factorial. The divide by n factorial I bring outside, so I get. Uh, 1 over n factorial because n is a constant, right? The sum is over k. I mean, not constant, constant, but it's constant for the summation. Now, what happens? I have n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. What's that? That n choose k. n choose k. Are we here? No, no. Hmm? No. No? No. Okay, I'll write it in the line below then. Is it is this partly coming? Yeah. Okay. One over n factorial summation k equals zero to n. N choose k f n minus k x naught g k x naught. Okay, and so what does this become? What can we use now for this summation? Fg. Yeah, we now use dagger. Mm -hmm. So this becomes uh, Fg to the n x naught uh -huh. over n factorial. Okay? Hmm? Are you here? Is this it? Yes. Okay, good. So the coefficient of x minus x naught to the n in the product is fg to the n x naught over n factorial. Okay, is that exactly what we want? So now we can write the Taylor, the product of the Taylor series is therefore what is it? Well, it's a summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of this thing, right? fg to the n x naught over n factorial times x minus x naught to the n. Okay, and is this the same as the Taylor series of f times g? Yeah. By definition, right? We use k usually, but we are just using n. It's just a dummy variable, right? This is the Taylor series of f times g. So that is essentially the proof. Okay. Are we here? Is this all here? Yes. Okay, so it's a little messy, right? We, we have to use this product rule thing. And, and now you see the, that the product rule, remember, remember when you, when you first saw the, the product rule, right? You, it, it, it was a little counterintuitive, right? You said, oh, here's what it says. F G prime is F prime G plus F times G prime. And it's, uh, it's not F prime G prime, right? That was the freshman product rule is not true, right? Mm -hmm. And that seems weird, right? Uh, but, but here we see that actually this, this sort of somewhat weirder looking rule is actually the, the correct rule that we need in order to make sure that the Taylor series operator is multiplicative. So although when you write as a product rule for differentiation, it looks weirder, but when you think of it in these terms, it actually becomes nicer. Okay. 
So, so that's that's what we have. So the Taylor series operator of a Taylor series product is the product of the Taylor series follows from that twisted looking product rule we have for differentiation. Okay.